After putting the Ferrari 430 through its paces on World Class Driving's autocross circuit, it's time to jump into the Gallardo. The Lamborghini is kind of more of a blunt instrument compared to the F430, and that, that's kind of the way it's always been between Ferrari and Lamborghini. Ferraris have been tuned thousands of hours in the wind tunnel and on the test track and you know down to the 15th decimal place of everything, and the Lamborghini is more like, it looks cool, it goes fast, you know? So what if it shifts a little slow and you know wallops you in the head once the power comes on? The Superleggera is the upgraded lightweight coupe version of the first generation Gallardo. An aluminum frame and generous use of carbon fiber make it over 200 pounds lighter than the base Gallardo. An improved intake, exhaust, and ECU bring the engine up to 530 horsepower. This car is a lot more uh, delicate than the Lamborghini. The brakes aren't as strong, but it just feels easier to drive. It feels lighter, but uh, I don't know which is ultimately faster. I guess we'll find out later. But before that, it's time for a runway entry and exit session. Here we meet instructor Roland Linder. He came to the United States many, many years ago, thinks of himself, and actually tells others that he is Rodney Dangerfield. The gregarious Belgian is a longtime racer with podium finishes from Le Mans to Lime Rock. So it's kind of funny that our first experience with him is a tutorial behind the wheel of that pinnacle of high performance, the Toyota Sienna. Pull outside of the turn. You see, a barely turn the steering. And that's what we try to teach them. There are no flat spots in the turn. And then we bring the car all the way on the inside. Of course, uh, the screaming tires are happy tires. With all due respect to Roland and the boys, the most accomplished race car driver here is Didier Taze. He's got the most wins ever in the famous Ferrari 333 SP, which included victories at the Daytona 24 Hours race and 12 Hours of Sebring. Right now, Didier's goal is to amp up our preparation for high-speed runway entry and exit. Our ride here is the Lamborghini Gallardo LP564. The curious thing about Lamborghini right now is they've only got two cars, basically. They've got the Gallardo and the Murcielago. And they just gave the Gallardo more power, so it's 552 horsepower now. And for all intents and purposes, this is just as fast as the Murcielago. You know, the Murcielago might be a couple tenths faster to 0 to 60 for twice the money. After we drive, Didier shows us how it's really done, which makes it abundantly clear that none of us are quite as fast as we thought we were. We teach people to be more comfortable at speed. Also, we teach them, you know, to look as far as possible, to get comfortable with, um, with the car, you know, because everything is flat here, because it's an edge strip. It's not like a racetrack where you get a different change elevation, where you can have some marker. Here's no marker. The only cones we put on the racetrack, that's the only marker we have. According to Jean-Paul, the Lamborghini LP564 should be one of the favorites to reach 200 miles an hour. Lamborghini in the old days, they were fast, exciting, fun cars that caught fire and never ran if it was drizzly out. The new Lamborghinis, just as fast, but evidently reliable because it's really an Audi that's built in Italy. And yet you look at the, the bumper and the fender here, Yeah. those are two different colors. It's still a Lamborghini. And it's definitely still a Lamborghini if you're six foot seven like Patrick here, who practically needs the jaws of life to free him from the driver's seat. A little later, we'll see if the SLR McLaren offers him more headroom as we launch our assault on 200 miles an hour. Plus, we'll get a sneak peek of the new Bentley Supersports, and I'm going to run an experiment to see how fast we can go in a hybrid. 